So Intel is making some significant moves uh, in the virtual reality world lately. TechCrunch's Lucas Matney got to peek inside of Intel's virtual reality lab in the company's Santa Clara headquarters. And uh, I don't know, it was a good read. It seems like a, a big reason for their push into VR is Intel's past failure of kind of moving significantly into mobile, Intel's sidestepping the traditional confines of technologies that we've already discussed, VR, AR, and mixed reality, a different MR, uh, to introduce its own type of interaction that the company calls merged reality. So we've got another thing to deal with. Merged reality. Now it's four, including two that are MR, if that's not confusing, which basically through the article says, kind of points out that merged reality is essentially a fusion of VR and computer vision for understanding context of the environment and the people around you. But that sounds like AR and mixed reality to me. So I don't know where the differences reside in all of this stuff. I, I guess, yeah. I mean, I guess it, it was, it's sort of like what's inside, you know, the, so I think of that, you know, Intel inside. So you can really sense what's around you. Like the technology can sense what's around you. Yeah. Um, so, but I, I think that HoloLens already does that. Like if mm -hmm. there's, if there's in HoloLens a thing sitting on your couch, if you can't sit on it, you know, you would, you'd feel it like if you were sitting on the, the thing. Right. So, but you know, I mean, you just, uh, what you said earlier, this is one thing I really took away from this article is it's not only Intel, but a lot of the companies that are really pushing hard in the VR space are those companies that missed the boat in mobile. Like mm -hmm. they, or like Nokia is pushing hard because, you know, they had the, that control in the mobile space. They were, you know, they were a big player and they lost it, you know? And so it, it just seems really like the, they're like, okay, well, we're not going to do this again. You know, right. we're, we're going to get in there. We're going to, um, you know, make the VR device that everyone wants for the long term. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, this looks like early days, like watching the, his video looks like it's really early days. A lot of the stuff that he's showing doesn't seem that advanced. Yeah. But you know, one big thing that Intel has going for it is it's real sense cameras and that's what's driving the recognition of objects is driving the positional data, allowing for the inside out tracking, which is kind of a big deal and definitely one of the next phases of VR as, as we continue forward, no extra hardware needed in order to do this. So you're not tethered to something. It's all done inside the hardware. Um, speaking of real sense and kind of that inside out approach while we were at, uh, while I was at the VRDC yesterday, um, I tested and interviewed the folks at Daiquiri Smart Helmet, and uh, that actually uses real sense cameras inside there uh, for its inside out tracking. Worked incredibly well. I mean, it was it was really cool to kind of put the helmet on and see and you know see the regular context of the entire room in front of me, and then almost this holographic image out in front of me that was like this turbine that I could you know walk around. You know, there was no extra hardware. It was all being done inside the helmet. So my position, you know, there wasn't anything like cameras set up in the corners to track my position in the room. It's just all done inside that helmet. And uh, that, you know, in, in this case, it was more intended for, you know, things like a, on, on a work site, let's say. So you might have, you know, different sensors that show you different readouts of this pipe you're looking at, let's say, or whatever. But it was a really good indication, really good idea. And I think it ties right back into this of the power of these real sense cameras and really just tracking where you are, where you happen to be and kind of the context that can be provided around that information. Well, in the video, they show, uh, you know, you can see your hands and then they show mm -hmm. someone with a smartphone in their hand. And then on, uh, I guess this is what they're talking about when there's real merged reality. So then there's a lathe that's spinning. And so you can like put your finger in the lathe and it looks like your finger's being chopped up or you can put your phone <laughs> Fun. in the <laughs> lathe. But so, yeah, it's, you know, it was obviously just a, a demo, but yeah. you could see that in like surgery or something, mm -hmm. oh, you know, sure, yeah. and, and that's something like, you know, you have an expert surgeon that's maybe, you know, wanting to do surgery somewhere miles, thousands of miles away. And so that merged reality, I have my hand, I have the tool that I would normally use. I, I don't know what they're sticking it into, like a dummy or something, or, mm -hmm. um, or maybe you're doing like a hundred surgeries at once. And <laughs> <laughs> You've got a hundred people all laid up with a robotic arm and you're controlling them with your one surgery. Yes. Mm, yeah. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> I, know. Um, no, I mean, I think hand tracking is another like when when I'm thinking of kind of these phases as I personally test more and more of these kind of VR systems and really kind of get in there and see what works and what doesn't 
uh, I feel like hand tracking is a really big part of this. So if if RealSense and and the system you know behind the scenes on Alloy is able to detect your hands in the visible space and put that to work, and you don't have to hold a controller or whatever, you're doing what comes naturally, ex instinctively, and that just opens up a whole world you know of control at that point. So Very this. Cool stuff. Oh, alloy headset that we were looking at, it's a reference design. Right. And so as is daydream was also a reference design, right? Mm -hmm. Like what does that mean exactly? I think basically what that means, at least as far as Intel is concerned, is they're building out hardware to, sh to best showcase the technology that and, and the work that they're doing on the technology underneath so that other hardware makers get ideas are, it's a visual, you know, it's a, it's a, real world uh, proof of concept essentially to be like, oh, well, this actually works really well and driving it is Intel's technology underneath. This is what we're going to build our hardware around or this is the form factor that works really well for this. So we're going to you know design around that. The, uh, Intel plans to release and open source all of this by mid 2017. Their plan is is just to basically treat this kind of like the, you know, the PC and, and how you know, it just exploded, you know, all of these, all of these different makers getting in on the game uh, because it was so easily accessible to everyone. So they're doing all this research now and, you know, what's driving it, it's their technology underneath. So if it works really well and it's open source, then that just means more development around, around this stuff using their products mm -hmm. and they're not missing the boat.